and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between New Art School and Design the Dutch podcast. Our guest today is Ben van Dijk. Welcome, Ben. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Fantastic to have you here. So tell us about you and your work. Well, um, so right now I am uh, an associate professor and the director of graduate studies at Michigan State University in East Lansing, Michigan. Uh, I run our MFA program uh, that was recently design, uh, redesigned, uh, which is a very complex model uh, that supports non-traditional graduate students in interdisciplinary work as uh, artist scholars. Uh, I teach advanced courses in typography and experimental practice, uh, design and activism, uh, design and culture, and graduate seminars in pedagogy. Wow. Fantastic. So you, you just got a master's approved and, and uh, t- tell us about, about the program. Yeah, we have, um, well, Michigan State has had a, an MFA program in, uh, uh, for many, many, many years. Um, and a few years ago, we decided that we would stop accepting students for one year and uh, sit down with my colleagues and think about um, What does the MFA of the future look like? Um, and more importantly, um, you know, Michigan State is a major research university, uh, um, one of the best in many areas in the United States. And, um, and we had to ask ourselves, uh, what does an MFA look like um, at a major research university? Uh, and so, uh, We built this model so that students would study something other than art while they're here and incorporate that kind of interdisciplinary thinking and, and work into their studio practice. Um, and so we have, uh, uh, it's a three-year degree program, three-year MFA, and in their first year, they're focused on exploration. So, um, you know, they come in as painters, they come in as printmakers, they come in as designers, Um, and we curate these groups as they come in, right? So we, ne- we don't have more than one uh, student in any one area. So a, the group itself is interdisciplinary so that they can complement each other instead of uh, we try to avoid redundancy, right? Um, we want a very diverse group of students here. And so we bring them in and they explore the campus and they explore it. They're reading, um, they're traveling, they're, they're thinking, they're talking to people. Um, and and we, we do a really good job of introducing them to uh, the students to people on campus, people in physics, people in, in, in the hard sciences and the soft sciences, um, and give them a, a kind of glimpse into what type of work they want to do for the next three years here. And then they integrate in their second year, right? They take that kind of experience and all of their new connections all over campus. Um, and they integrate that into their studio practice. And then in their third year, they have a major exhibition at the Broad Art Museum, um, which is a stunning space. You should, you should Google it to see the building. It was designed by Zaha Hadid. It was her last major project before she died. And um, it is a, a, a world-class um, art museum, one of only two contemporary art museums on university campuses in the United States. Um, and our graduate students, part of their final year is they get to have an exhibition in that space, a solo show. And, um, and they write a comprehensive uh, a thesis that uh, accompanies all of that work. That's very exciting. That, that's, that's three years full-time? Yeah, full-time wow. and uh, fully funded. So our students do not pay tuition while they're here. In fact, they also teach for us while they're here. So they actually get paid a, uh, a salary. So instead of paying to come to the university, we pay them. That's, that's, that sounds like the ideal uh, course. It is. Yeah, it's a good gig. That's really good. Fantastic. So tell us about the work you've been doing uh, outside. Uh, you're, 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 you've been traveling quite, quite a bit. Yeah, I have... I've really been blessed um, because I have circled the globe um, many, many times over. And, um, you know, my work goes in so many different directions, probably too many directions, honestly. Um, I started out as a professional 
designer and art director. Um, and um, I decided to quit and go to grad school. I mean, being a professional designer was interesting for a while, but it made me crazy. It really did. And it was soul sucking and I hated it. Uh, but I did love design and even more kind of what was below that surface was that I love to learn, right? Um, you know, I'm a curious person, like, you know, like we all are and I get bored easy. And so, you know, for people who get bored easy, oh man, graphic design is not the place you want to go. Uh, in my opinion, you know, I think some people would disagree with that, but you know, so much of graphic design is formulaic and so much of, you know, you know, it's communication. So it has to be simplified, right. In order to, for it to work. Right. Um, but that makes me crazy. It's, it, it honestly, um, just bored me to tears. Right. It, it, uh, so I quit. Um, and you know, I was, uh, uh, that was mutual. That was a mutual decision between me and my employers also, because they were like, yeah, you should probably quit and move on to something else. This isn't working out for either of us. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, um, it made sense. So I went to graduate school, uh, at the university of Mich Michigan, uh, the stamp school of art and design. And while I was there, the, um, you know, I started to think about um, design and and communication and language in a way that um, wasn't necessarily digital, but certainly um, you know physical, uh, three dimensional, um, and big. And so that's when I started doing installations um, and and really interested in uh, um, codes and ciphers and and, and cryptology and uh, complexity. And I started doing, and for so for about fifteen years or so, I've been doing these uh, large scale exhibitions made out of wire and uh, um, mostly steel and welded and bent steel, and they're all um, sort of focused on the same idea, which is uh, I like to call benevolent flux. And the idea of benevolent flux, which has kind of um, become my life's work, is that. Um, that there's great value in flux. There's great value in complexity and chaos. Um, but we tend to uh, overlook it. We tend to ignore it. We tend to avoid it at all costs in our lives, um, in our day, you know, as we go through our day um, and certainly as professionals, you know. And so there, what I'm interested in is, is um, um, work that transcends that that understanding and, 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 and the benevolent side of, of randomness and uncertainty. Um, uh, cause I find that to be so important. Um, and so I spent a lot of my time there doing these, ma these massive installations that, um, for all intents and purposes really pushes, um, really pushes the, um, the limits of language right to the brink of destruction um, and it allows people in the museums and galleries that I show in um, to engage language in that, in that type of mental space and physical space. Wow. So you didn't quit. You just became, came from a designer, you became an artist. So it's, it's actually the natural progression uh, because you went from the specific to, to, to the greater you, you, so you, you're, you're still a practitioner in that sense. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I mean, it, it's interesting you say that because, you know, for so long, uh, so many times over the past 15 or 20 years, um, I've had, uh, sorry, I need to plug in my computer. It's going to die. Bad timing. I apologize. And I can't do two things at once. My brain doesn't function that way. Um, so many times over the past, you know, 15 or 20 years, um, people have asked me, well, you're not a designer, you're an artist. Um, and I'm like, okay, uh, sure. Um, I, I, and maybe maybe I am, I, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm an artist that finds all of, uh, is in inspiration from design or uh, a designer that finds inspiration from art. I, I, I'm not entirely sure. It's probably a wide spectrum and I land 
somewhere on there at any given time. Um, but, you know, I, I deal with that sort of label often, but I will say that in many times when, when, um, when I, I'm referred to as an artist instead of a designer, it tends to be, um, it feels to me to be a little dismissive, like, oh, okay. that's not design. On the contrary, on the contrary, it's it, it become broader. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it, that. It includes uh, what you, you've broadened because, because the uh, definition of, uh, you know, I mean, the main definition of design, uh, my favorite yes. thing, Paul Rand's balance between form and content. Uh, yeah. But... Uh, it, it's it's to to a specific brief to a specific client to a specific yeah. whereas yeah. uh finance a broader that's expressive more about about what, what your your need what you want right that's it's true not, it's not dismissive on the contrary it's it, in fact it's it's, a, it's almost natural, the natural progression of the design and many designers have, have gone that have gone that way yeah i really appreciate that yeah and and i really do try to like i'm i'm i spend a lot of time thinking oh well, what if, or, you know, in my mind, it's always like a hold up, wait a second. I, I need to, I need to think about this. I need to break that apart. I'm re you know, um, I spent a lot of time thinking about Paul Rand too, um, but not in a good way. Uh, right. So, you know, it's like, it, it's not necessarily contempt that I feel towards, um, clean and polished design it's just that i spend so much time thinking about um you know what happens in the brain when we're confronted with complex visual structures you know i mean if i have my library behind me you know there's a lot of books in physics and a lot of books on and in, in, in mathematics and there's a lot of books here um in biology Right. And I find all of the good information that I need uh, for thinking about experimental practice uh, from those books, not from. Um, there's probably some design books back there. <laughs> probably. Uh, I doubt it. Um, and so, you know, I'm really about expanding, uh, you know, the expansion of the uh, ideas and um, thinking about design as well as the design itself. Fantastic. So tell us about your journey into education. Yeah. Well, it's it started out strange, I'll say that. Um, you know, I hadn't, you know, I never had any intention of becoming be, being, you know, an academic. Um well, you know, I guess maybe that's not necessarily true because in 2001, um, I had Graduated with my Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, my BFA, from Kendall College of Art and Design, 1999. And in 2001, one of my former professors calls me up and he says, hey, Ben, uh, do you remember um, Professor, uh, shit, I've already forgot his name, so-and-so? And I say, yeah, well, he had a heart attack and died. I was like, oh, man, that's terrible. Uh, yeah, but classes start in two weeks. And we need somebody to teach his classes. <laughs> Will you do it? And I said, uh, me being me, it was like, yeah, I'll do it. I don't care. I'll give it a whirl. Um, so much of my life can be summed up that way. And I did it and I loved it. I loved it. I jumped right in and, and I didn't forget that. And I went back, you know, every once in a while I would teach a class, but I was mostly focused on my professional career. Um, and then even in graduate school, I had every intention of, you know, becoming um, uh, a professional designer again. And even after graduate school, I ended up working for a studio in The Hague called uh, NLXL and, um, um, in the Netherlands. And, and um, I think a lot of the things I was reading and a lot of the things I was thinking about was just, there's no place for it in professional design practice. Uh, you know, I, I still think maybe there is, I just haven't found it. And maybe that, maybe I don't care enough. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I got a offer to teach, uh, at the, um, state university of New York in Buffalo. And, and I took that job and, um, and I started teaching and sitting in a classroom, sitting in a studio with, uh, 
um, young designers, young thinkers. And I loved it, like talking about big ideas and what's next and, um, and what if. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I loved it. Um, and I got, you know, that was the research university also. So, you know, minimum, minimal teaching, maximum research, right? So I spent a lot of time, you know, um, reading, writing, and making about all of these ideas I've mentioned, especially about benevolent flux. So, uh, you know, um, it really stuck with me. And then I came to Michigan State University um, and I got a chance to redesign this MFA program. Um, and that sort of administrative role uh, suited me. I liked it. It was really damn hard and it nearly killed me. Uh, but I, it was, it's incredibly rewarding. We have graduate students here now who are living out and practicing that model. Um, and it's a, it's a complex model and a complex system that I think was influenced by a lot of the complex systems theory I've been reading and my appreciation for setting, building a system that can be, can feel random uh, um, and have any number of potential outcomes. Um, and really, you know, we, f we focus on um, setting the stage, setting the stage for them and not choreographing their moves. And so, you know, and, and, and um, you know, I'm sitting in my office, hundreds and hundreds of books behind me, and it's quiet here because the university is shut down. But I have my coffee, and this is a good this is a good deal. I have a view of the river, um, and I get to talk about what's next, and I love it. And um, I would also credit, you know, for ten years I was the vice president of uh, design research. Uh, an education nonprofit called Design Inquiry. And Design Inquiry is interesting. We, um, it's a nonprofit that brought uh, small groups of interdisciplinary makers and thinkers um, to a remote island in the Atlantic Ocean to do really intensive um, work for, uh, uh, for roughly a week. Um, we eat to eat together, we cook together, we drink together, we, we make together, we think together. And, we, and, and, and then the work is published in, in one way or another and exhibitions and things like this. And, and that type of um, um, hybrid model of research and education was really important. Uh, big part of my uh, uh, identity as an educator. So it, it sounds like my next question about how do we do ed education differently, like the magic wand? Mm. Would you say that you've accomplished everything or that there is no accomplished everything you want or, or you could still get a magic wand and, and change something in, in, in education? Oh man, that's a... You know, that's a really good question um, because one of the things that drives me so, so crazy um, is just the uh, institutional uh, bureaucracy, right? I mean, this institution, and I'm really interested in institution building and uh, institutional critique. Uh, and even as a massive institution like this, we have 58,000 students and it's a huge campus. It's beautiful, but it is massive. And in order to want run and operate properly, it has to be predictable. Um, and that seems at odds with my thinking um, because that, and I'm think, and, and I'm c considering, I'm not considering uh, when I say that all possible facets and, and possibilities, but more theoretically, the, uh, you know, an institution like this is not built and does not have its, in its DNA, the ability um, to pivot um, or to be fluid. Uh, maybe in smaller ways, but, um, um, and I think that's true for any large corporation, you know, and this is basically what this is, you know, uh, Michigan State University is in East Lansing, Michigan, a city that is quite small. It's a little college town, cute little coffee shops and, and, and bookstores. And, um, and the campus is the majority of the city. 
So the campus operates like a little village, a little town. We have a president, we have, uh, you know, 16 vice presidents or something like that. And, um, and and there are laws and rules and streets and sidewalks and bikes. And, um, and it's really hard to do work um, that is unpredictable. It's hard to do work that is changeable. It's hard to do work that is, uh, you know, dynamic and fluid. Um, Would you give in order an example? Uh, for example, you know, one of the things I do is take a lot of notes on, you know, new new curriculum, new classes. You know, I always ask myself, what's the dream class that I want to teach? You know, and, um, if I wanted to teach that class, it would, you know, it would be, you know, up to two years to get that approved. Um, and there are cases like if I wanted to teach a class, I can give it a pilot and do things like this. And I'm really just being whiny about it, really. Uh, but, um, you know, I also have daydreams about like, what if I started my own school? What would that look like? You know, and and I think that would look a lot like uh, design inquiry. And in my experience with design inquiry, uh, you know, it's a... Um, a really beautiful model in, in how to set the stage without choreographing the moves, you know, how to uh, uh, frame a frame an argument and frame a, a situation and curate a group of people that is wildly different from, from each other, um, both in um, um, diversity and in, in, in perspective and knowledge and, and background and ethnicity uh, and, and geographic location, you know? Um, yeah. That's a fantasy of mine. Uh, we'll really? see where that goes. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. So, how can our, our viewers and listeners uh, find you? You know, good question. Um, I have a website, benjaminvandyke.com, uh, which probably should now that I say that out loud, I should probably update it. Uh, most of that is a little bit of writing in a lot of images for my exhibitions. I think there may even be some slides of my student work up there, but maybe not. It's hard to tell. Um, you know, it, beyond that, um, you know, the last three years have been administrative work and I've been stuck behind this damn computer sending emails. And, and honestly, that's fine. And, and I'm looking forward to getting back in the studio pretty soon. Um, but uh, my email address is bvdk at msu.edu. I'd love to hear from people. I really do. Um, I've traveled the world and um, I've been really lucky with that, doing exhibitions and research. Uh, and, um, you know, I can't wait for the world to open up. I can't wait for us to, um, you know, be healthy again and safe. Um, so we can move, so I can move. Brilliant. Any last piece of advice you'd like to leave us with? Yeah, I would say, as far as design goes, you learn most about design from people who are not designers and books that are not about design, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite books I have coincidentally sitting right here next to me is The Social Conquest of Earth by Edward Wilson. He's a biologist. And in this book, he writes, as humans, the individual is biologically irrelevant. And as a designer, I think this is very important to understand and think about. Uh, our very nature is collabor collaborative. And um, it is the social network that has built our species into this very complex system. We only know about ourselves what we know about each other. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much uh, for, for coming. Uh, My pleasure. Enjoyable time. And, uh, yeah, thank you. So, all the best.